Leo Hendry, who runs the private equity fund Intermedia Partners, was on Capitol Hill March 27th with a group called Smart Capitalists to lobby for passage of an increase in the minimum wage to 10.10 an hour. We asked him why he and other business people like him are joining the effort. You know, as a businessman and as a citizen, I think they run hand in hand on this issue, Isaiah. That we have more income inequality in the United States than we've had since 1928. And, and it ranges the entirety of, of roughly the 90% of American workers who don't consider themselves or are not in the elite. And the, we're particularly broken at the bottom of the wage scale. We have roughly 30 million women and men in the civilian labor force who would be positively affected by a raise in the minimum wage. 15 million directly, 15 million indirectly shortly thereafter. It, it will not solve the income inequality problems of the United States. But it's such an ethical issue, and it's certainly the right place to start to address that imbalance, that a number of us from business are here today trying to convince Congress that the very best thing for the United States, the very best, is a vibrant middle class that grows from the bottom up. And, and I emphasize the phrase, from the bottom up. These 30 million women and men are supposed to be the entry-level workers of our, of our society. And the wage they earn, however, is so paltry, so unfairly low, that it's not entry-level, they're, they're stuck there. And until we unstick them and, and put them into the middle class where, where they belong, we'll never, ever have a balanced economy in the United States. You know, the, the general image of business has been that they, business has been in the forefront of fighting and increasing the minimum wage. Um, are you, how much of an exception are you? Or, or do we have a misperception? Are there more businesses? I, I think, I think it's a misperception. Uh, there are 154 million workers in the civilian labor force. Only about 30 million of them, and that's a huge number, but only about 30 million of the 154 million are in this low-wage category. The, the resistance to this comes from two groups. It comes from the low-cost fast food industry, most notably McDonald's, and it comes from the low-cost retail industry, most notably Walmart. Walmart's most direct competitor in the United States is a company called Costco. It pays its women and men a starting wage of $12 an hour. Walmart pays its workers $7.25 an hour to start. It's criminal that that gap is so huge. McDonald's, on the other hand, gets its employees are so poorly paid that across the nation about a billion and a half dollars of state aid every year goes to these women and men just to survive. In other words, McDonald's is a billion and a half dollars more profitable because it, it lives on the backs of its low-wage employees and lives off of the subsidies that comes to that come to, indirectly to the company through the states. Most business people are proud to pay their workers more than the minimum wage. They're proud to view women, women and men at this level as entry-level workers. Two industries only, two. Fast food and low-cost retail would like to have it uh, this anachronistic way. If you were the CEO of McDonald's, uh, what would you do uh, about that? And how, what, expect, what result would you expect? Well, if I were the CEO today, I would be embarrassed. Uh, I'd be so embarrassed that I would try to rectify this inequity. I'm of an age that I first met McDonald's when I was a young person in the mid-60s, and I was raised in a, in a poor environment and used to buy a meal, literally, because I was working, even in my early teens, for a dollar. Yet, I say, I can go home tonight and see on television an ad for a dollar meal at McDonald's in the year 2014. So, in, in the 40-plus years that that, that span uh, covers, a, a, a dollar meal in 2014 just shouldn't be that. That one is being done on the backs of a Hispanic worker who picks lettuce and tomatoes, uh, a Hispanic worker often who processes the beef, and, and, and a myriad of people who stand at the counter and sell that cheap hamburger to us. It's too cheap. 
but also McDonald's, to be frank, is too profitable. No company should be profitable based on inequity of its of its treatment to its employees. No company. So I so I, if I were that CEO, I would I would take my embarrassment and I would either fix McDonald's right away or I would stop being a CEO because I couldn't possibly live in that environment any longer. And do you think uh, that you could make a case that if McDonald's raised its weight and, and, and made it a, 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 a you know, 10, 10 or more um, at the starting level, that McDonald's would still be a profitable company, nothing, it would nothing. still be able to afford to, to eat there? Well, well said. Nothing would happen. We are, as a society, we're very comfortable with fast foods in our in our eating patterns. I'm still going to buy that burger at McDonald's if that's what I've been doing. I'll just pay an honest price for it as a consumer. But I'll know when I go to bed that night that the young woman or young man who served it to me, or the older man and older woman who served it to me, might have a more comfortable, more appropriate lifestyle. Fifteen thousand dollars a year, which is what seven and a quarter relates to, seven and a quarter an hour. It, it, it's so far below what a woman or man needs to live and survive in this economy that anybody who pays their workers that level and, and sticks with it should truly be embarrassed. One final question. Um, you're here in Washington and with with other business people uh, you're talking to, I presume, Republicans who have in the past resisted voting for a minimum wage. Um, do you expect uh, to have some success in winning them over? Uh, I'm hopeful, Isaiah. I'm not optimistic. And the reason I'm not optimistic, as I said in an interview I did yesterday, is nobody represents in Congress the low, the low wage earner. Nobody. Yet McDonald's is well represented by its lobbyists, as is, as is Walmart and, and people and companies like Walmart and McDonald's. So money, money talks in this town, and until the lower wage earner can have its own voice in town that matches that of these low cost, low wage companies, I'm hopeful, I'm not completely optimistic. We, we sold our souls in this town a long time ago to, to corporate money, and, and this will be one of the examples perhaps where we, we see the, 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 the adverse impact of that. Well, maybe uh, low-wage workers and their allies need to get better organized. Well, the, n no businessman who's honest doesn't believe this is the right thing to do in terms of retention, uh, loyalty of the workers, the quality of the work that, that is put out. It's only if you can get away with it that you would ever think of doing this, and these two companies, these two industries are getting away with it right now. Uh, and, and that's why I, I often use the word, as I said, Isaiah, of embarrassment. I would be embarrassed to be in a work environment where this was the standard as opposed to uh, the exception. Well, I really appreciate that a lot of people who are out in the front lines earning seven, eight dollars an hour really appreciate your fighting for them. Well, somebody needs to. Thank you very much. Thank you.